Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, today I wanna to share with you the secret to growing strong, stocky, healthy sweet pea seedlings that naturally branch. And I owe all this information to the wonderful Roger Parsons. Now, up until about, I would say three years ago, I was growing sweet peas as a cool flower and they were growing okay, they were flowering okay, but something was definitely missing. I knew I could grow sweet peas better, I just didn't really know where to turn. And there's a lot of conflicting advice on sweet peas on the internet and also in books. And I kept trying different methods, nothing seemed to be working at the level that I was going for. You know, I wanted to grow that perfect, stocky, you know, small sweet pea seedling that I saw my friends over in the United Kingdom grow. But when I would fall back on the advice of some American growers that were in very different climates than what I'm in, I was really just not having great success. Like I said, the plants were okay. They did flower. You've probably seen sweet pea flowers in my garden, but I definitely didn't feel equipped to ever share about how to grow sweet peas. And this still isn't really that video. You know, I'm still a student when it comes to sweet peas. I've only been growing them for eight years, but Roger has been growing sweet peas for over 35 years, and I cannot recommend his book, Sweet Peas, An Essential Guide, highly enough. I think I paid $20 for this book on Amazon. I probably read it 50 times. It is just jam packed full of information. And Roger is over in the United Kingdom. I'm here in the United States and Southern Pennsylvania, but he does touch briefly on kind of all the different climates in the United States. So I basically tried to find my climate within that chapter and follow his advice. And I've been using his advice for the past three years and it has made just an incredible difference. I mean, I can't even tell you a night and day experience. It's like growing an entirely different species. So the trick is just to grow your sweet peas hard or to grow them cold rather. So let's start at the beginning. I'm using root trainers, but I feel that's completely unnecessary. Just use, here's Grace, just use something that's very deep. The benefit with a root trainer, and unfortunately the thing with root trainers is they can be quite expensive. So if you're growing tons of sweet peas, it's probably not practical to invest in these, but they do have a hole at the bottom. So they air prune themselves naturally. Grace is really excited about Roger Parsons too. They air prune themselves naturally because of that hole at the bottom. And then look at this, Grace. Okay, I'm not exactly sure where I was when Grace got so excited. We had to take a little bit of a break there to replace some ball. But basically I used the root trainers. These were gifted to me, but prior to this, I used the very large cell packs that come, I think that's 32 or 36 cells in a tray, but they have a really nice deep root run on those. That's totally fine as well. The nice thing about root trainers, sorry if I already said this before, is that they have the hole at the bottom and then they open up like a book. So it's really easy to plant them. And because of this hole at the bottom, what's happening is that they're being air pruned. So we plant the sweet peas into just standard potting soil, a fourth of an inch down, and they're gonna grow these great roots for us through these channels. They're gonna hit that air at the bottom and they're going to be root trained. So then the roots are going to branch off. And you can see that happening over here versus circling, which is what will happen in a confined space. If I were to plant these, say, in a round pot without drainage, the roots would just start to circle around themselves versus just go straight down and then branch off to the side. So I do like the root trainers, but they are expensive. If you're planting a lot of sweet peas or if it's just not in your budget, don't worry about investing in these at all. Just get a really nice deep root run for your sweet peas. But now let's talk about the most important thing, which is to grow them on cold. So I'm here in zone Southern Pennsylvania, that's a zone 6B, and my climate is very, very hot and humid in the summer, and that heat and humidity comes on very quickly. It's the second week of April. Today's high is 85 degrees. So it's humid and hot very quickly. You know, it'll be spring, but it'll feel like summer. 
And in contrast to that, our winters are cold and wet. I have tried direct sowing sweet pea seed in the fall to overwinter. I have always and continuously, every time I tried, lost those. And I think it's just, they're just rotting in the ground. It's just too wet and cold here. So what I do is I start my sweet pea seeds six to eight weeks before the last expected frost. I germinate them right here in these root trainers inside my house. But the moment, and I'm talking about the moment that they germinate, they just bing, pop out of the earth, they go outside and they remain outside to grow on until I'm ready to put them in the garden. And wonderful things happen when you grow them cold and hard like this. First, they grow up in the environment that they want to. They grow not tons of top growth, not tons of lanky top growth where we're gonna see a really long stem and then a leaf and more stem and then a leaf. And you have this big plant in six weeks. Instead, in six to eight weeks, you have a small plant with a really wonderful root system because it's been concentrating on the root system. And also when you grow them cold, they naturally branch on their own. So let me show you one like that. So here's one where you can see it's already begun to branch right from the base. Here's another one where it's begun to branch from the base. But you can see it's really not so much about the top growth. I don't really want a huge plant here with lots of leaves and I definitely don't want to see a stem that has a lot of room in between the leaves itself. Instead, I want to open these root trainers or I want to look inside my cell tray and see a really, really strong, well-established root system that's ready to go into the garden. So in terms of what kind of temperatures do these experience during that six to eight weeks outside, I did track it this year. We went down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. They were totally fine. Roger mentions in his book that they can take temperatures down to 23 degrees Fahrenheit. And if it gets any lower than that, he recommends putting frost cloth over the plants. So here we are, friends. These have been growing for eight weeks outside, and now they're ready to go out into the garden. Now let me just talk about how I used to grow sweet peas and why I wouldn't choose to grow them that way anymore. Now, when I first started growing sweet peas, like I say, I'm still really a beginner when it comes to sweet peas. It's only been about seven or eight years I've been growing them. I didn't grow up with sweet peas. I grew them as a cool flower. And the main difference was that I started them even earlier and what was going wrong for me, I didn't know it at the time, but what I was doing wrong is that I was growing them under lights inside. And I was just ending up no matter how close my lights were to the sweet peas, they were growing way, way too fast inside. And I was ending up with a lanky plant that once I hardened it off and planted it out into the garden, and I was at that time planting them out into the garden about six weeks before the last frost, they were suffering so badly. I mean, it was embarrassing how bad they were doing when I was planting them out. They were yellowing even browning at times. Sometimes I feel like I would lose the plant, but the root system would be okay and then it would come back from the root system. But I could just tell it wasn't the right way to do it for my particular situation, my particular climate. They were not happy that way. And after about three or four years of just trying that over and over again and seeing, you know, them just languish and suffer, you know, I'm a big advocate for cool flowers, but when it came to sweet peas here, at least in Southern Pennsylvania, it was not working at all. But this works, growing them cold from the start, from the moment that they germinate, bam, outside, 30 degrees, 25 degrees, 27 degrees. Don't worry about it. They can handle it and you'll get these strong, stocky, short seedlings that naturally branch from the base that are able to really handle whatever the weather, you know, throws at them. But friends, for now, I wanna wish you a wonderful day. Grace says, let's go play ball and go to the park. Mom, you're so boring talking to this phone. <laughs> so I wanna wish you a great day and happy gardening. Bye.